It really doesn't matter what kind of haversack you're going to pick. Uh, it's really up to you. It's such a personal choice. And if you've been following this channel, you know that I've tried and reviewed a lot of different types of haversacks. Uh, reviewed the Bushcraft Satchel from Helicantech. Uh, the Hidden Woodsman Haversack, and then today I'm carrying the finished gas mask bag, which actually I've done updates to, and I'm going to go over those updates with you today, uh, show you what's in the kit, and just kind of talk about my philosophy of why I carry Haversack and why I think they're a great item to supplement your day pack, so stick around. Now, there's a few reasons why I like to carry a Haversack, and one of them is it really forces me to make hard choices about what I'm taking with me, and that uh, allows me not to carry so much stuff because uh, I think like most people I'm an overpacker um, I always feel like uh, there's I got to take everything you know plus the kitchen sink to be uh, comfortable in the woods and that's not always the case and I end up taking a lot of um, just useless items that you know are really never going to be used and um, are always for some kind of fantasy scenario of survival and that's you know for the most part when I'm out here day hiking, uh, scouting around, hunting, whatever, I don't need much more than a haversack. And the haversack really just needs to cover the bases, the basics. And the basics for me usually start with the five C's. So we're talking about uh, some type of cover, uh, a canteen, um, a cutting tool, things like that. So, you know, definitely review the five C's that Dave Canterbury came out with because I think they're a great basis for any day kit. And then you know, as you step up in the size of your kit, you can add another five C's, um, which gets into more elaborate tools. But for the most part, <clears throat> everything I, I need is covered in this bag. And what I love about it is I can throw this on over heavy layers uh, easily. I can swing it around when I'm walking and open it up and, and get to things like my gloves, um, stuff like that. So those are all good choices uh, for me when I'm out hiking and doing activities outside like this and um, there's just something about a haversack that I, I really I really dig and the uh, the old military surplus is always a great place to start you know um, when I was doing the the budget bushcraft series this is the bag that I chose uh, one of them the for guys to go out and try as a budget bag for bushcraft and I think it's still a great choice so let me show you some of the uh, changes I made to mine and then I'm going to show you what's inside this thing. So, first thing you notice is I went ahead and I sewed a uh, Velcro panel in the front of it so I can add add a patch to it. Just something so I can decorate my bag. Uh, the other thing I did is, and there's actually a, a, a video about this where I sewed webbing on the sides. So if I want to attach pouches or slip in a tomahawk or a small hatchet, I can. Now, of course, when you do that, that adds a lot of weight, but uh, it's still nice to have that option because this bag did not have any type of molly and I'm really used to molly on all my bags so having this webbing having this one inch webbing to me is really important because that gives me options of attaching more stuff to the bag um, and customizing it and then really the only the only other thing that I've done to this and I think this is the, the biggest improvement is that I've changed the shoulder strap now, if you're familiar with uh, the finished gas mask bag, it comes with a very thin shoulder strap, a little bit thicker than this one, and it's permanently attached to the bag. It's sewn into the bag. Um, it's adjustable, but it's sewn in, and it's thin, and I really didn't like that. I wanted a thicker uh, shoulder strap that would be more comfortable, and I wanted to be able to take the shoulder strap on and off as I needed. So what I did is, I left this tab on, this is the tab that it comes with, but this one I cut and was able to remove the, the webbing, the shoulder strap, and then I re-sewed it down with some heavy gauge uh, thread and needle, and uh, it's been holding up pretty well. And I replaced it with this, which is, this is the um, US military accessory strap. If you can find one of these, these are an awesome piece of gear. Uh, they work with a variety of bags and they work great with this one so this allows me now to have a thicker shoulder strap and just makes the bag more comfortable and more adjustable for my body style so those are my updates all right so contents real quick 
uh, leather gloves for prote hand protection. Of course, I always carry this, uh, what they call a casualty blanket or a um, thermal blanket. That way I have something to make a makeshift shelter. and also gives me something to kneel on when the ground is wet. Love to carry my Hidden Woodsman signal panel. And I really use this for uh, fire prep. So I do all my wood prep on here. Canteen kit. Got my canteen from Lost Wild Outdoors. Nalgene canteen. Got my new Firebox Nano. That's the stainless model. Got that little buckskin pouch I made. Of course my spork. Some coffee packets. Piece of heavy duty foil to put underneath my stove. Canteen cup lid. 550 cord. And then the heart of the kit really is this fire pouch. This is where I keep most of my fire making supplies. With the stove, I like to have these little uh, tinder cubes. These are from Weber. Vaseline cotton balls. Fat wood. Ferro rod. Jute twine. This little match safe, I got this from Lost Wild too. This is a really kind of a cool thing. It holds matches. Got a couple cut down uh, waterproof matches in there. Got a birthday candle, the kind that you can't blow out. And then some tinder in there and a striker. And this is, this thing's waterproof. It's got actually got a rubber seal on it. Thanks for a nice little, little, uh, standalone kit by itself. I've got my uh, flint striker. My pocket bellows. And then I've got my flint and steel kit in here. This is all the flint and uh, char cloth, things like that. And then a butane lighter. So that's it. <clears throat> So that's all I'm carrying in this kit. It's not a lot of stuff, but it you know it really covers the basis for me. I'm able to heat up water for coffee or for food. Um, I've got a really extensive fire kit, so no matter what situation or weather I'm in, I can start a fire. I've got um, a very lightweight thermal blanket that I can use um, for a tarp or to wrap myself in, make a shelter out of if I really need to. Um, of course, 550 cord to assist with that and then a signal panel that doubles as an area to do my preparation for my wood for my fire um, either for my stove or if i'm making a campfire um, what's great about this haversack and any haversack um, is that this is something that you can take along uh, with you on longer trips by merely emptying it and then putting it inside your backpack and then when you get to camp you take this out, you fill it up, and you hit the woods, and you can scout around. Um, but for me, I use haversacks all the time. I use them in the summertime, winter. It doesn't matter. I like them. I prefer them over a heavy day pack, um, and I, my default is always going to some type of haversack. Um, sometimes I have to use a backpack because I'm bringing an axe or a bigger saw. Um, oh, that's another thing. You know, one thing you will notice in here: there's no saw and there's no knife. And that's because um, I usually carry either this with me. So this is a has a small saw built into it. Or I'm going to carry a belt knife and then maybe I'll slip in a smaller saw in here. But for the most part, uh, those are items that I add at the end. And I don't always carry a knife in the pack. I usually carry a knife on me. Um, that's just a better way of doing it for me. All right, here you can see everything packed inside the bag, how it fits. Very, very nice. One reason I choose a canteen for this bag is because it's it's short. 
and it doesn't take up as much room as a 32 ounce Nalgene. So that's something to think about when you're deciding which haversack you carry. The Hidden Woodsman haversack is taller, so it can actually fit a 40 ounce bottle pretty easily, but you can't with the with the um, <clears throat> with the finished gas mask bag. So keep that in mind. Another thing I like about the finished gas mask bag is it has this flap on the inside. And when you pull that open, let me flip this around for you. There's actually an organizational pocket sewn in that you can fit flashlights, pocket knives, pens, by 50 cord. There I got my my spork right there. There's my stove and my canteen lid. So these pockets are really nice for keeping your gear organized and um, keeping it from falling to the bottom of the bag. And then when you're ready to go, you just seal that down and button those buttons. And that way if the bag opens up on you or falls off, it's not gonna dump everything out of it. All right, guys, I'm going to pack up and get out of here. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.